In this episode, I'm going to share the steps that I take that are common to most R-Pods when breaking camp at a full hookup campsite. Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. Thanks for visiting the On The Road YouTube channel. You know, this channel is all about helping you get the most out of your R-Pod experience. Before we get going, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. If you want to dive deeper, we put more content and photos on Instagram and Twitter at John Marucci. So let's jump in. I'm going to give you some tips about breaking camp that may really help you when you get in the situation of a full, uh, full campsite hookup here. If you're traveling with others, consider assigning each person a specific task. So what will this do? This will help provide assistance on the tasks and create a sense of ownership. And the next point, consider doing cross checks on vital tasks, really important. It avoids something being overlooked like, for example, one time I left the Blue Ox uh, Sway Pro Latch wrench on the top of my tanno cover and drove away. Next tip, if inclement weather is expected, do certain tasks early. Now, this is really important, like putting up your awning, doing your dump tanks, checking tires, slide outs, bikes, etc. Okay, another tip, if it's a morning departure, do certain tasks the night before. And by the way, when you do this, your neighbors at your campsite will probably really appreciate it. So let's look at the outdoor checklist for tearing down camp at a full hookup campsite. The first thing I like doing is torquing my lug nuts. Now I have a torque wrench that I got from Harbor Freight and I make sure I go on both uh, wheels and torque the lug nuts before any trip. That's always an important thing to do from a safety perspective. The second thing on the outdoor checklist part is to check your tire pressure. Now you should have, if you don't, you should have a tire pressure gauge with you. And you want to check your cold tire pressure and make sure it's according to the manufacturer's uh, inflation amount. Okay, the next thing I do is brush off the slide out. Now, I have a small ladder I keep in the back of my truck, and I just get that out with a small br hand brush, and I, I go to the top of the slide out, and I just brush what, any kind of debris off the slide out. So it's important to do before you bring the slide out in, which is actually the next step, is actually pulling the slide out. So it's just a matter of cleaning and brushing off what, any debris that's on the slide out. Now you're at a, a full hookup campsite now, so the next thing I do is dump my tanks. Now you can take your time doing this because you're at a full hookup campsite. So there's no one behind you in line at the dump station. You can just open the black tank and let it drain. I always do a pretty thorough black tank flush because I I'm you know have a full hookup and I paid for that. And so I'm gonna flush the tanks really well and take my time with that and get it clean. And so I take my time at that, of course the black tank side, and then the gray tank side like you're supposed to. And I have a video on, on doing uh, draining your tanks and doing all that you can watch on the site. So the next thing is, is unhooking any water hoses. Now this includes the water filter and any hoses that you want to do and any kind of nozzles and things that you have to control the water to the rig. Now obviously uh, full hookup, so you have city water at this point, you're not using your fresh water and you just want to unhook everything and put it away where it's supposed to be. Of course, the next step I'm going to take is turn off the water heater. Now, I almost always use the electric water heater, not the propane, especially when you're hooked up and have 30 amp electric, whether it's a full, uh, full hookup campsite or not. So if I have electric, I'm going to use the water heater electric, so I just turn that off. And I'll turn off the propane at the front as well on the tongue. And so the propane tank is turned off fully before I travel and then I'm going to retract the stabilizer jacks. So that's the next step I'm going to do outside is just retract those jacks and bring them up uh, so they're no longer contacting the ground. Down. Okay, now the next obvious step is once you've done all that, you're going to hook up your tow vehicle. So there's a hitch that you've got to do, safety change, your seven pin electrical cord, very important things that you do it right. It's always good if you have someone with you to double check you on this, even if you've been doing it a while. In fact, especially if you've been doing it a while, Sometimes you can go through the motions and forget something just out of habit and take it a little too casually. So just be aware of that. It's always good if you have someone with you to double check you on that. But you got to hitch up correctly and put your safety chains on in your electrical cord. And then finally, once I'm securely hooked up to my tow vehicle, I'm going to remove the chocks from the wheels. Uh, that's the last thing I do in, in terms of uh, connection and making sure that I'm safely connected to the tow vehicles, then remove the chocks. The next thing I do is remove the power cord. And of course when I do that, I'm going to go inside the unit and I'm going to change the refrigerator over from 30 amp power, shore power, to battery. 
And when you go in, you'll hear the refrigerator beeping, saying that it's no longer hooked up. So you're going to need to do that. Okay, then after that, I'm going to fold up the entry step door and fold up the entry door assist handle and then go and lock the belly storage if it's not locked already and lock the door to the unit. And finally, before we pull out, we're going to do an electrical check, meaning we're going to make sure that the turn signals are working properly on the back of the R-Pod, including the driving lights, indicator lights, and the brake lights before we head out. Okay, so now let's look at the indoor checklist. Now there's several things we have to do from an indoor perspective. The first thing is to remove the electronics and delicate items. So almost every time we travel, we have laptops or other delicate electronics that we want to take out of the tow vehicle so they don't get bounced around. And of course, secure any loose items. You don't want anything flying, especially if you hit rough roads at all. You can have things flying pretty well, so make sure you secure all loose items including securing the TV. So you want to use the strap that's with your TV and secure it down. Uh, we turn off, of course, turn off the antenna booster if you forgot to do that. And of course, secure your dinette table, usually turning it upside down on the dinette uh, cushions and tying it down strap with the strap and securing it. Uh, if you have a 179 like I do, you've got to remove the ottoman cushions, right? Uh, before you, you bring the slide out in. And actually, another thing we do is we clean the slide out from the inside. I talked earlier about you know pulling the slide out in. Once you pull the slide out in, and this is a little tip, we have a little small folding step stool that works really good that we just unfold, and that's a step stool you can step up and actually clean the slide out from the inside, wipe it off of any kind of other debris that didn't come off or any dirt or, or uh, moisture in there because you don't want that rolling off or getting in the cab. Okay, and then, of course, you got to turn off the water heater and uh, turn off the thermostat and always remember to close the fan uh, vent and turn the fan off so that's all closed and ready to go. Make sure all your windows are closed so you don't forget to leave some, and you leave something open while you're traveling down the road. And I talked about this earlier but I almost always convert my refrigerator to battery right before I unhook the 30 amp, um, 30 amp cord of electricity to the unit. Okay, so there's some of the indoor tips. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful for those of you who are getting going and, and tearing down, have to go and tear down when you do a full, uh, a full hookup campsite. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you share it and give it a thumbs up. And I invite you to share your comments. You may have some things that you think uh, are also good tips to help people out as far as tearing down a camp from a full hookup campsite. Remember to use your, leave your comments. They really do help other people. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is John Marucci and so long for now.